Now, there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans are worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. We continue this series, Help, I need, uh, Help, Do You Need a Cross Transfusion? And today, uh, the focus is Help, I Need Mercy. Help, I Need Mercy, uh, dear Christian friends. Um, can you relate to this? Uh, the, he pulled, the higher patrolman pulled the guy over because he's, uh, he committed a, a violation. How many can relate to that? Just sit, make sure you're awake here. Yeah, okay, good, yeah. So, uh, one of my earliest recollections of childhood was being in, in the car with my mom. And we had just seen my, my cousins on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. And, and somewhere on that peninsula, there was not a car in sight. And, and my mom got pulled over by a highway patrolman. And I remember that because she kept telling me, highway patrolmen are our friends. They're our friends. And I wanted to say, no, they're not. No, they're not. Uh, because, because it shook her up so much. Honestly, you know, I, I, I wanted to pop this guy. You know, I was just a little kid, maybe two or three years old. Uh, and, and what our whole family learned from that, and, and we'll never forget, is that, is that you cannot go over a double yellow line. Did you know that? You cannot go over a double yellow line. You will get a ticket for it. The officer showed my mother no mercy. He wrote her out a ticket, right? That's what we always hope for when we get pulled over like that. We want mercy, right? Hey, just give me a warning. There was no warning. She got a ticket. I remember when I was a sophomore in high school, uh, I was helping my dad. He, he had lost his job, and so he, we, we kind of painted together. Whenever I had a day off school, I, I, would, I would paint with him. And we were, I think it was on a Saturday, or maybe I had a Monday off. And we were on uh, this freeway up near Pasadena, and, and I don't know, Dad wasn't thinking, and he was just going really fast. I, think, I guess he wanted to get the job, but I think he was, you know how you do that sometimes? You're, you're kind of not, not with it. You're thinking of something else. And, and I, I, you just couldn't, it's, my dad and I had a great relationship, but there was like a respect thing. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say like you're going too fast, Dad. I mean, I don't know. That's just, you know, we just didn't do that. And, and, and so I'm sitting there thinking, he's going too fast. He's going, I hope a cop doesn't come. He's coming too fast. Well, sure enough, here's the little red light behind us. You know, and pulls him over, and he's going over 90. Uh, yeah, or, uh, maybe the kid should have said something, but you just didn't do that, honest, you just didn't do that. <laughs> and and uh, I remember he gave that ticket to a good friend of his who was a lawyer, because the lawyer said, you know what, they might throw you in jail on this one, you better let me take care of this one. So, so I mean, it, you know, we always want mercy when we get pulled over, right? Is that what you want, or do you want justice when you get pulled over? Mercy, yeah, mercy, yeah, me too. I always, I, I always want a warning, I always want mercy, not justice. If it's somebody else, right, somebody just whiz by me, okay, give him justice, right? But me, I, I, I want mercy. So, so, so here's, here's the question for today. Mercy, I'm sorry, here, here's the statement for today. Mercy is someone getting what they don't deserve. That kind of makes sense? That's what mercy is. Someone getting uh, what they do not deserve. Put the next one up for me, Dad. David, uh, you remember uh, the story of David in the Old Testament? He was, a, as, a, as a little boy, uh, uh, maybe a young man, somebody who's about 16 years old. Ra- raise your hand. Anybody? Okay, about a 16-year-old. I, I'm thinking, you know, he, he wasn't very big. He's the guy that, that when everybody else ran away from the giant Goliath, he trusted in God, and, and he walked up, and he fought Goliath, and he won. Remember, it was that David? And then he became this great king, K- King David, right? The, the, and the Bible says of him that he was close to the heart of God. Remember him? You remember about him? Okay, he's close to the heart of God. God. God loved him and so forth. He wrote all those. He wrote half the Psalms in the Old Testament. One day, David, as a king, he was um, he saw a woman bathing, and um, instead of getting his eyes off of where they shouldn't have been, right, he just kept looking, right. Not a, not not. Re- you know, we we can really take a lesson from that. Don't be looking at what you shouldn't be looking at, right. <laughs> 
But he didn't do that, all right? He, he didn't take his eyes off her, and he ended up committing adultery with her. And she became a child. Her name was Bathsheba. Uh, and David tried to cover it up. You know, he didn't want anybody to know. He figured, hey, if nobody knows, then they'll still think I'm this great, glorious king, and God likes me, right? And everything's cool, right? So he, he tried to get her husband to come back. He is, her husband was in the army fighting Israel's uh, uh, enemies, right? And he tried to get him to come back and have relations with his wife so that they would think that it was, this was his child. But he had made a vow. He's a very holy man. He made a vow to God, and he said, no, um, I'm not going to have relations with my wife until the enemies of God's people are defeated. So he, did, he refused. He listened to the king and came home, but he wouldn't have relations with his wife. And so when he went back, David told the general of the army, uh, at the fiercest time of the battle, I want you to everybody pull back from this guy. His name is Uriah. And so he'll be killed, and he was killed immediately. So David then, in, 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 denying, <laughs> in denying his sin, he, he, created not, he, he not only committed adultery, but he committed murder. And, and uh, he thought he could keep that hidden, though he wrote in later Psalms how it was eating him up inside. His bones, you know, his very, he said it in very colorful language, but his bones were breaking inside and so forth. He was, he was eaten up by, by guilt, but he just wouldn't admit it. God sent, in his mercy, God sent uh, the prophet Nathan to David, and, and, and Nathan told David a story, uh, uh, and it really, in, it was a story about him, he just didn't see it. And at the end of it, D David said about this guy in the story, he says, you tell me who that is, I'm, I'm basically going to wipe him off the face of the earth, you know, he, this is what should happen to him. And the prophet looked at David and pointed at him and said, you're the guy, you're the guy. When that struck David that he needed mercy, uh, he wrote these words. And, and you can check me out. You can go home today. You can look up at Psalm 51. In every Bible, it, I think just about a Bible, it says words written by David after he sinned with Bathsheba and, and murdered her husband, okay, or something like that. All right, you can check me out. So he wrote these words. It says, have mercy on me. See, David couldn't stand with justice right then, right? He only had mercy left. This says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. That means you hurt for me, God. I know you hurt for me. I, I know you love me. Have mercy on me because I can't stand under justice. So please have mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. He used three words for what he had done. And they're synonyms, but they have a little different meaning. Transgressions is like um, crossing the line. Have you ever done that in a conversation? Maybe it's a little heated. Maybe with your wife or your husband. It's a little heated conversation. All of a sudden you said th you crossed the line. Right? And you know things aren't going to go good from here on out. Right? That's transgressions, right? I crossed the line. David said, I really crossed the line here. I really, and, I, and I can't go back. I, I really crossed. I can't, I can't fix it. I crossed the line. And, and, and then he says, wash away my iniquity. Iniquity is kind of like when we feel dirty inside. Do you ever feel dirty inside from what you've thought or what you've done or what you can't make up for, that stuff behind you? You ever? That's iniquity. You know, that's... That's the nuance here, that sin. And then cleanse me from my sin. Of course, sin is, is missing the mark. But, but when you take these words, cleanse me from my sin, they were the same words that were used um, when one uh, had leprosy. You guys know what leprosy is? Uh, it's, it's that communicable disease that when one had it in, in ancient times, they had to put them away from the people, so they were cut off from the people. And with Israel, when, when they became clean of their leprosy, they, 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 would go, uh, they would show themselves to the priest, and the priest said, okay, the priest would say, you're cleansed, you're, you're, you're okay, and you can join the people again, you can have a life again. So David is using these words before God. He said, wait a minute, it's all in mercy. He says, I can't stand up with justice. I, I, I can't stand before you and ask for justice. It doesn't work. i got to have mercy. And I know that I crossed the line. I know that I'm dirty inside, and I hate it. And I hate it, but I can't fix myself. And I just got to be cleansed by you so I can have a life again. <laughs> That's what he's saying here. So here's the question today. Where do you need mercy in your life? Sometimes it's, it's something that uh, you did a long time ago. But man, we wish we didn't do that. And, and we can't change it. It's done. The you know, psalmist said, Lord, cleanse me from the sins of my youth. Huh. But somehow we still feel dirty inside from them. Huh? Sometimes it's what we did yesterday. Maybe something you said to your kids or something you said to your parents. 
or something you said to a friend or to your wife or to your husband and, and you can't make up for it. It's, it's done. Maybe there's a relationship that is, will never, ever, ever be the same again. You can't fix it. And you know, <laughs> you know that it, by, by rights, you're supposed to fix it. But you can't stand up under that justice because it's beyond you. That's where you need mercy. Perhaps it's um, just realizing how far you are from God and that you really can't find God on your own. You got to have him come and find you again. <laughs> you need mercy because you can't get there on your own. In this text recorded in Luke, the first thing that Jesus tries to communicate is that we all need mercy. He says, you know, um, you know those Galileans that came to bring sacrifices to Yahweh, to God, and, and, uh, in, and right in the middle of their sacrificing, they were butchered by the Roman soldiers? You guys think you're better than those guys because that didn't happen to you, right? You think that God must have really had it out for them. They must have really been sinners. He says, you know that, that tower that, that fell on those 12 and, and killed them? You guys think that you must be better than them because, hey, I, at least that didn't happen to me, right? God must like me. I must be, so, I must be doing something right. And Jesus says, no. He says, they weren't any, you're no, no better than they are. And he uses this word repent. I, I, repent means to, to, to turn away and turn towards something. It, I think here it means to, to turn away from any idea that you don't need mercy. <laughs> Where do you think you're good enough? Where do you think you're better than that other guy? Where do you think your life is better because you've done the right stuff and you deserve it? Where do you think God must like you because you've, you've done something good? You can't stand up to the justice there <laughs> because the, the, the goodness is perfection. Are you there? Jesus is saying we're all in the same boat. It's like the, the Romans verse that says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're, we're all in the same boat. We all need mercy. We, by our very nature, have lost the path to God and cannot find our way. And, and you know, every single human being, we, we know that's true inside of us. We, we know inside of us that, that, that we can't measure up, that we can't find God of ourselves, that we're lost, that we... We have that piece of us that, that seems to always be empty. We know there's that stuff that we kind of stuff like David did and pretend it never happened. We think, boy, if I don't admit it, then nobody else will see it and I'm okay and it just eats us up inside. We know things are broken and we can't fix them. Every human being does. That's the story the Bible tells. But it also tells from the beginning to the end of a God who comes to us when we cannot come to him. Of a God who comes to us in mercy to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. A God who became one of us in Jesus Christ. Who would go the way of the cross. Who would, who would live the perfect life that we cannot live in our place. And who would take care of justice once and for all. It is finished. Justice has been met. God only has mercy left for you. And we receive that relationship by faith. Right now, God's spirit is touching your hearts. He's saying this is true to, to maybe for the first time, touching your faith with this reality, touching your heart with this reality, maybe renewing you in this reality, maybe saying to you by his spirit, it's okay, that thing that happened yesterday or a week ago that you feel so bad about and you can't fix or 20 years ago that you can't fix and you can't redo, it's okay because it's washed clean in the blood of Christ. It's not a matter of justice, it's a matter of mercy. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses you from all sin. In this Hebrews text that, that was read, Bob, great job reading that text, by the way. Thank you. 
Great job. In this Hebrews text, there we find these words, for we do not have a high priest. You know, that's a reference to Jesus. In the Old Testament, the high priests were the ones who would uh, sacrifice the animals for the sins of the people. Jesus is the great high priest because, because he was the sacrifice. He was the one on the altar of the cross, all right? His blood flowed for us. So we do not have a high priest who in God's mercy put himself in our place, right? This is a mercy thing. This high priest, he's our high priest because of God's mercy. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses because you see, he's one of us. He was tempted in every way that we are, yes, without sin, but he knows us because he is our brother. I remember when I was... um, Sophomore in college, a, a guy loaned me a, a Toyota, brand new Toyota, Toyota Celica. I drove a 65 Volkswagen to give you a, an idea, all right? And this thing was, it really had some pickup, the zoom zoom. And the reason he loaned it to me is that is my Volkswagen wasn't running very well. And after work, my, my mom and dad had wanted me, to, I'm not sure why, but had wanted me to come up. It was about an hour drive from where I, I went to school and worked and stuff. And so about midnight, I hop in this Toyota Celica, and I'm really tired, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get home. And I'm on the, I don't know if any of you know the freeway, it's the orange, the 57 freeway, which has these big, long turns that, and, and hills that you can really get going if you're not careful. Uh, and when you go from a 65 Volkswagen to a brand new Toyota Celica, you're not care, and you're, and you're tired and you want to get home. Anyway, I wasn't watching the speed limit. And I had one of those little red lights right behind me, you know, so I, I pulled over, and I was going really, really fast. I didn't realize it. And the guy gets out, and he says, you know, if I wrote up this ticket, uh, you wouldn't even be driving tonight. I'd have to take you to jail. I go, oh, man, mer- you know, mercy, mercy. <laughs> and uh, really, that's what I'm thinking. I- I'm thinking, I'll oh, just give me a warning, mercy, but I'm thinking, I'm dead, I'm dead. You know, my folks wanted to see you, but not, not like this, right? I- and this all went through my head. And-, and, um, and then he looks at me, and he says, you know, I've got a kid your age, and you're really lucky I do. Because I know how, I, I know about your life, how crazy it is. Yeah, and he just, he, he, he talked to me a couple minutes and he says, I'm just gonna let you go. And, and he says, don't be speeding tonight. Uh, 55, the whole way home, honest. 55, that's all I went. Mercy, okay. He gave me mercy because he could sympathize with my weakness. See? Jesus can sympathize with your weakness. You don't have to hide anything from him. He knows it already, right? He sympathizes with you in your weakness and he only has a heart of compassion for you and grace, undeserved love. Knowing this about Jesus, let us then approach the throne of grace, undeserved love with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. Where is that time of need for you? Where do you need mercy? In Jesus Christ, God is there for you. In this text from Luke, it ends with Jesus telling this story. And he tells a story about a vineyard owner who plants a fig tree. Uh, By the way, that really got me. A vineyard owner plants a a fig tree. Does that make sense to you guys? Uh, And no one ever, uh, no no commentary anywhere even commented on that. It's banging against my, you plant grapes in a vineyard, right? Anyway, it says this vineyard owner planted, I guess that happened a lot. I don't know. This vineyard owner, he planted a fig tree, right? Uh, and, and he went back three straight years to see if it had any fruit and didn't have any fruit. And so he told the guy that, that took care of the vineyard, he says, just rip that thing out. It's, it's worthless, right? Just, just rip it out, plant another one so I get some fruit here. And, and the guy that took care uh, of, of, the, of the vineyard, um, which I think is supposed to be a picture of Jesus, right? He says, hey, just wait one more year. Just give it one more year. Be patient. Be patient, give it one more year, and I'll, I'll take care of it, I'll, I'll prune it, I'll, I'll give it water, I'll, I'll feed it, I'll, I'll show grace to it. <laughs> and, and let's see if, if the thing will have life then. Just one more year. That's Jesus' heart towards us. He's not running away. He keeps saying, he keeps saying one more day, one more year, one, one more today is that day for you wherever you need to have mercy in your life wherever you need to know the mercy of Jesus Christ right now the spirit is touching your heart and he's saying I've been waiting for you today is the day so where do you need mercy in your life Jesus understands he's our brother remember 
He is patiently knocking on the door of your heart waiting. <laughs> one more day, one more year, one more week. He's waiting, one more hour. Today is the day. In Jesus, you have mercy. Today is the day to receive it anew. And then I ask the question, who in your life needs mercy? I, I think this is really important. I remember I taught a, a half a year at a Lutheran high school in Denver. They lost a teacher, and I have a teaching background, and so they said, hey, can you try to split your time between the parish and, and teach a half a year? And I said, I can do that, and, uh, which wasn't very smart because I really couldn't, but I did it. Um, but, but I remember these kids, uh, it was in a religion course, and it was right about the time the AIDS epidemic was going full-blown, okay, full-blown AIDS epidemic. And, and they, they were kids from all walks of life. They just weren't Lutheran kids, all walks of life. But I remember in that classroom, they all must have been taught to live according to rules, and that, if you, and that if you go on the other side of the rule, you're going to get whapped, and that's just the way it is, and that's life. And I'm sure that's life in a lot of places. You've got to have consequences and so forth. But I remember being really um, just shook up because not one of these kids even thought about showing mercy to these folks who were dying and suffering from AIDS. They were just getting what they deserved. When God touches our hearts with mercy... His Spirit also empowers us to show mercy to those who only deserve justice, <laughs> just like us. That person might be your husband or wife this week, or somebody you work with, or your children, or your parents, or that person across the street, the person next to you. But the same spirit that touches our hearts with this mercy of God in Jesus also empowers us to show that mercy. I pray this week that God's spirit would open our eyes to that one person or two persons or three persons that, that he puts right in front of us that we can show mercy to and, and speak the mercy of Jesus to. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life never ending. Amen. We stand and confess our Christian faith. I believe in one God.